this is Eric, KJ4YZI, with a video uh, demonstration slash review on an item that was requested for me to test out and make a video on by RadioDiddy.com. And uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show it here what it is and, and give you a rundown. And there's some things I like about it and some things that need to be improved. So here's a video to sum it all up. And uh, hopefully this video gives you an idea and makes sense of what it is. So you're all familiar with the AP510 APRS tracker. I've made a video on this and how to program it. Okay, this is the AP510. The previous version was the AVRT5 or the different manufacturer was the AVRT5. So now I was sent the AVRT6 APRS tracker. And there is some similarities to the 510 and there are some differences and there are some features that this has that the AP510 does not. So let me go over this. Uh, the AP510 was strictly a VHF 1.5 watt GPS and battery all in one with Bluetooth and this was a compact device that had everything in it and you can put it in your pocket and go. Well and it was only RF uh, via whatever frequency you put in the settings. This one's set to 144.390, but it was uh, VHF amateur uh, transmitter inside. Now, the AVRT6 has two modes. You can connect this to several types of radios and beacon your position and receive your station information from RF, or it lets you operate over GPRS, which is a SIM card that would go in here that is a GSM SIM card that would have a data plan for GPRS on this and that's what this antenna is for this would uh, beacon your position and send your, your information to the APRS main website over cell uh, RF or cellular service okay and that could be useful or that could be uh, not useful it would be useful if you're in an area that doesn't have RF for APRS data, if you're a cross-country driver, you can use the data plan on the GPRS SIM card and set the frequency every so often to uh, the frequency as in the uh, time interval of beaconing your position uh, through the GSM antenna here. So I don't have a GPRS SIM card to put in here and to test it that way, nor have I done that yet. So I'm not sure if that's going to be a popular method of using this it may in certain countries it may not here but uh, I've tested this and used this successfully on RF so let me show you what this comes with uh, on the unit itself of course this is your GSM antenna and this is where you would plug the GPS antenna in and I'll show you what that looks like it's a standard hockey puck type magnet antenna with the threads here that would fit on and I think it's an 8 or 10 foot cable and this is geared primarily for the mobile uh, vehicle, whether it be uh, airtime, uh, maritime or aircraft or land mobile vehicle. The GPS would go on the roof of your vehicle for a better reception. The AP510 has the GPS built in and had no problem using the GPS in your car, you know, inside your car or in a building. This would lock on in most buildings, uh, whereas this one has the external, so you'd have to run the wire out, you know, outside your car. Uh, and now this doesn't have a battery in it, so you'll see on the back it, it labels each port what it is, okay? Mic 8 pin for ICOM, mic 6 pin for Yesu, radio data, okay? And those three look like this. This is your standard 8 pin modular, 6 pin modular, and a DIN cable, which is similar to a S-Video or a PS2 uh, cable, all right? And it came with some cables here I'll show you. For instance, like this is the, uh, the 8 pin that would go here for ICOM. Now, my uh, uh, Yesu, okay, let me show you. This is the Yesu plug for my mic, and that's an 8-pin. So by only putting a 6-pin for a Yesu may not have been the best thing because there may be some Yesus that have 8-pins and ICOMs with 6 and vice versa. But it does come with the cables so that it may fit your cable, for instance, here's the six pin that would go in here to a specific, maybe a FT2900 or other VHF uh, units. Now, 
there is no list on what this is compatible with as far as those radios, so it's kind of a guess right now. And like I said, there's no battery in this, so they provided a uh, a power adapter here, a 12 volt power adapter, which would fit into here to power the device. Great when you're home, not great when you're out in the vehicle. What I have found is the 12 volt lighter socket accessory for the Bofung radios for the car chargers will fit and operate in here. So if you already have one of those or if you plan on buying one, it's very inexpensive, plug it in your cigarette lighter and uh, power the device. But it's not really the best not having a battery in here because if you don't have power, you can't use it. Okay. Now the radio port here, this radio port come, is, came with a cable that's... Uh, the six pin here round that goes to a, my in this case I have it set up for a Bofeng UV5RTP, but it'll work for the Ushans and, and GT3 and UV82 and whatever Bofeng or Saint Sonic radio that you can use the programming cable, it will work with this. Um, and that's the one main thing. I'm going to show you here with this on in action. I have one here with the GPS hot in service and I have it connected to Again, the UV 5R uh, TP 8 watt. And you'll see that the cable is just like the programming cable for these radios. I have it set to 144.390. And I have this up here because better range here, all right? But and I'm going to leave this here. Uh, now, this is what it looks like with it on and the screen on. And the GPS is screwed into here, and I'll show you what this looks like. It's just a long cord with the, the the hockey puck on the end of it. All right, well that's not metallic there, but uh, or it won't stick to that. But anyways, it's like a typical hockey puck uh, GPS antenna, and this would go on the roof of your car. In this situation, I have it by my window in the house. Uh, but so what you're seeing here is the data of stations coming in. All right. This it'll show you the call sign up here VE three LT dash twelve, and uh, the distance from him eighty six point five kilometers south of me. All right, so and it shows you on the bottom. There's his uh, description of his where he's uh, hopping through, which uh, Digipeter W four OT wide two dash one, and uh, it'll show you on here the speed he's traveling, his course, uh, his altitude his latitude and longitude so you can see where that person is, his or her, excuse me, and how far away they are. On the bottom it'll show you your satellites. I have nine satellites. The temperature is 31.8 Celsius. The pressure is 1,006 millibars and the vol uh, voltage is 4.4 volts. One problem is it only shows you kilometers and meters so it's set up for the uh, imperial uh, you know metro or the metric system, excuse me. Uh, and in the programming software right now, there's no way to change that, so I'd have to know by kilometers uh, what I'm using. Great for in Europe or uh, China, but not good here in the U.S. There needs to be an option in the software to change this to miles an hour or kilometers. Uh, but as the sh stations come in here, it'll display on the screen. It'll just replace the one that you're seeing. Right now, the next station that comes in uh, will populate on here. Now, uh, one good thing is you can see this here or you can uh, pair it with your Bluetooth device, um, such as the APRS Droid app on my tablet here, all right? And it's compatible just the way the 510 was. You have to pair your device with it. And any stations that come in will be displayed here on the map. Uh, Here's all the, the, you know, there's the Digipeter there and uh, the station mobile here. Um, so it'll show you on here either on a map form or a list form. That's messages. Let's go back here. All right, so there's the list of all the stations that this has received with the UV5R. Uh, and all the green ones are me beaconing out and all the uh, blue ones are received. So you can see that. These are all the stations. There's the last one there, VE3LT-12. Um, so you can click on any one of these and it'll show you uh, 
information about it. Yeah, you're probably, excuse me, you're probably familiar with this. And if you wanted to look this call sign up, you can hit qrz.com or aprs.fi, and it'll take you to the website. Uh, so that's that's a good feature. But what's what's not good is if you're tied into the radio port here with my Bofun, like I am. Uh, you can receive stations through the handheld to this device and transmit back out the, the handheld. If you are using the supplied cable here, say for an ICOM radio, this turns into a one-way tracker because you're not, you have no way to receive stations from the local digipeter and put them on this device because you're only connected to the mic port. So that's why I chose to hook it up to the Bofung radio port here. Uh, you can't, I mean, that would be very good to use this as a one-way tracker, but you can't see anything that's coming in, you can't receive messages, and you can't use the radio it's connected to because if you're using your ICOM plugged into the 8-port mic pin, you can't talk on the ICOM because you, you disconnected the mic. So that renders the radio useless for voice communications and this a one-way tracker. So again, this needs to be designed primarily without these. Maybe the option to have the built-in transmitter, such as the AP510, with an option to plug it in here with the radio port. This way I can hook it to my 8-watt handheld if the 5 watts was not enough, uh, or I wanted to um, use a uh, different kind of radio, maybe a cable from the 8-port here or the 6-port radio pin here to say a mobile, if I did temporarily want to use it with an FT2900 Yesu or whatnot, I have the option or else I can keep it in all one form like this. So I think the GPS that was in the AP510 needs to be put into here uh, with the Bluetooth that's already in there. And I'm not sure, uh, maybe you guys watching can comment on here and let me know how important you think the GSM or GPRS mode would be? Uh, would you use it? Um, it doesn't look like it's that popular anymore to get the SIM cards, but not that's only in the U.S. I'm not sure in other uh, countries. Would it be popular enough to keep the GPRS on here? And uh, would you like to have it this way, or would you like to have it with the all-in-one feature such as this? You can leave some comments and let me know. I think personally, with adding these cables, uh, it would make this cumbersome. And again, there's no battery in this, so I'm powering this with the USB programming cable that it came with. I'm using the five volts for the USB, just because I don't feel like plugging that device or the, the power adapter across the room uh, and running it this way. So uh, that's that's my thoughts on this. It's great that it works with the uh, APRS Droid app, but adding all these cables, it may be a hassle to have to bring all this stuff. So if the next version that they can come out with would be the AP610 incorporated with all these features and the screen, it'd be great to have the screen on the AP510, but they didn't include one. So without the, without the app, you can't see any information from this. So you're basically transmitting and receiving, uh, and some of them are being stored on this so that when you hook up your, your APRS Droid app, everything in the last, say, hour or two hours comes in from here on the, the map on your droid app. So that's a good thing. I wish that would happen here. That way it'd make it all one unit. And please feel free to comment. Let me know what you think about this and what what you would think that it would uh, be more improved or if the GPRS is going to be popular or what you would think would make this better. And I hope this uh, enlightened you anyway to see this. You can leave comments down below. You can click support me to support this channel for all my videos if you've been helped before with all the videos I make. I have more videos coming, so uh, this is the first of many. So stay tuned and let me know. And please subscribe. This is KJ4YZI73.